everybody. Welcome to another session of Covera Insights. Uh, we are joined today by Devang, uh, Devang Shah. He's the co-head of fixed income at Access Mutual Fund. Um, he's been in the financial markets uh, for a fairly like, uh, long time and he's been in, uh, uh, you know, with other AMCs also before this. He's uh, been a fund manager since uh, 2008 uh, when he was with ICICI Prudential AMC. Uh, in terms of qualifications, he's a gold medalist in financial management. He's a BCom from Mumbai University and he's a qualified chartered accountant. Uh, hi, Devang. It's great to have you for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Devang, what uh, uh, what we would be discussing today, we want to understand a little bit about uh, fixed income products. Um, what is your outlook on fixed income? Why do you think there is an opportunity um, to invest in fixed income products more now than uh, before? Uh, and then try and delve a little bit into target maturity funds. Uh, rightly said, Neil. I think a lot of things have changed in the last 12 months for fixed income specifically. And if you look across that, there's been a seesaw change in bond market yields. I think probably last year at the same point of time, we were all talking about a very, very slow and gradual pace of rate hikes. We we're talking about where uh, I think central bankers were talking inflation, which is transient. They were talking about growth, which is fragile. And in the last 12 months, I think things have massively changed. Today, the themes have changed towards hyperinflation. Things are started talking about that we'll be entering into recession for many developed market world economies. So there's been a seesaw change from a perspective on interest rates also. Central banks panicked after the Russia-Ukraine war and uh, they were so worried about what would be the impact on inflation, core of oil, rising oil prices, rising commodity prices and the supply chain significantly getting stretched that they have taken a call that they would have to front load the rate hikes. What we have seen across developed markets as well as, and the same thing has happened in India also, we have seen chain and massive chain of rate hikes. Uh, from Fed, I think if you look across at the US markets, Fed has actually hiked from discount. Now probably they've reached for half and they're probably still continuing on uh, rate hikes. They're talking about another 50 to 75 basis of rate hikes. It will be slow and gradual. Similarly, if you look across at uh, the, the Indian central banker, they have moved from 335 to an operative rate of six quarter and we've actually seen the operative rate moving massively. Repo rates have changed from four to six quarter. 6.25 but actually the operative rate has moved from 335 to 625 so it's been a 300 basis of hike in the entire year we've seen a lot of volatility in bond markets muted returns for fixed income investors but i think incrementally from year after a lot of uh being spoke rate hike already behind us uh, most of the fears on inflation outlook and near-term inflation outlook actually looks quite, quite on the lower side to look at the Three, six months CPI prints, headline CPI prints, not only in India, I think probably globally would start tapering off. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot being behind us incrementally from year on, I think outlook for fixed income is quite uh, positive. We are advising clients today, if you look across at the bond deals, I think from one year asset to 10 year asset, everything is available at seven half. The curve has got massively flat. Last year, at the same point of time, the curve was very, very steep. If you look across, the one-year assets were at four, four quarter. The ten-year corporate bonds were at seven forty, seven fifty levels. The one-year has sold off. Ten-year has broadly remained the same because a lot of front loading of rate hikes had happened, or probably of the fiscal fears. We have seen the ten-year significantly at an elevated level at the beginning of the year only. The curve has massively got flat, and still, I think inflation fears. Uh, do persist. We are out of the danger zone. Incrementally, we are not going to see 7 and 8% of headline CPI. But are we in a zone where probably uh, we need to go too bullish on fixed income markets? I would say no. We do need to still remain cautious. Yeah. Inflation will continue to remain in the near term also above the central bankers mandate. Yes, US CPI will fall from the 7-8% handle, probably move towards a 4%. Similarly, in a case of India, I think Indian CPI will move from a six and a half, seven percent handle to close to five percent, five point five. But they are still above the RBI's mandate of four percent and significantly above the Fed's target of two percent. Right. So, for the next twelve months, what we believe is that RBI or Fed will probably do a couple of rate hikes more, take the operative rate in India from six quarter currently to six half. Fed would probably go to close to five percent. All that is already in prices. But post that, we would have a stable rate regime 
for almost six to twelve months. We believe that we will not see any rate cuts in this year. Oh, okay. that, that's great. That, the way I think what uh, what you already answered is that uh, you know you do see that we are probably peaking or at least very near the peak yes. uh, from a rate cycle perspective. Now, um, from an investor's perspective, and uh, you know, oftentimes investors are also borrowers. Uh, because they would have uh, you know some of the other uh, loan, whether it's in the form of a home loan, and home loans are typically being the cheapest type of uh, you know interest rate products as a borrower that you can avail of. When rates go up, there EMI impact is significant. Uh, now, in uh, you know investors will be very familiar with this because the impact comes immediately and. It comes, uh, you know, in some cases there could be as much as like you already mentioned with the 300 bips uh, delta on the uh, rate side, uh, EMI typically would have gone up by, you know, almost 30 percent uh, for a lot of folks. Uh, but this is on the grim side. On the, you know, bright side, does that does that mean that if there is, you know, surplus uh, savings available or uh, if your asset allocation has been skewed towards a particular asset class, does it uh, does it mean that currently fixed income presents an opportunity to participate? Uh, and in that sense, you know, probably a tactical asset allocation call, um, maybe for a you know six twelve month horizon at least. So, Neeram, I think, see, uh, what we are advising clients always, and what we put across is uh, first of all, SEBI has done a beautiful job of getting products or probably classifying products as per the investment horizon. So if an investor has a three month investment uh, view, I think we have a liquid fund or an ultra short term fund. Similarly, if we have six to 12 month perspective, we need to give him a money market or a low duration fund. So SEBI has kept this duration uh, limits on each of the categories and probably provided a fund for each investment horizon. If it's a three year investment horizon, it's a short term fund. If you have investor as a 10 year investment horizon, is a long duration fund. So uh, I think keeping the investment horizon is first of all a must more, much more important criteria as far as concern is whenever your investor wants to invest in fixed income funds. An investor will have a very, very good experience if he's actually matching his investment horizon with the category of fund which he's investing into. Right. Secondly, I think uh, traditionally we have seen in India, like you pick up any time frame, I think I'm talking about the last 20 years now, uh, inflation in India significantly doesn't go below five. And similarly, inflation in India doesn't stay for too long above seven. Why? The reason being is above seven, it's actually detrimental to growth. It doesn't lead to, and I think a lot of uh, books, a lot of literature has been written on the same, that above 7%, it will start impacting growth. So central bankers then somewhere down the line start uh, hiking rates. Similarly, it's, if it is significantly below 5%, central bankers will start cutting rates. Okay. Uh, if inflation is 5 to 7%, generally the rates in India would probably be between 6 to 8. We are very close to when we look across that, and I'm talking about rates, when I'm talking about FD rates, I'm talking about not the repo rate, because for a common man, what is applicable is the mm -hmm. FD rate or what he's investing into. Today, we're already there at 7.5% like one year series i think retail rates have also fd rates have also inched up now i think uh, uh, two weeks back retail rates were fd rates were all between six half six quarter six half now they are probably moved towards a 675 to seven percent band right. what we believe so that when mutual fund products are offering you seven half even if you invest in a one-year product i think the time has come the option time has come for investors to have by design some allocation to fixed income an investor will not go wrong much when he's investing at in fixed income products at the absolute entry yields of seven and a half. So I think opportune time is there. Most of the rate hikes are behind us. The local macro currently significantly augurs well for fixed income investment opportunities. Do you take the inflation outlook? It is going to go down lower. I think probably growth also is a mixed bag for 2023. Probably will not have such a high growth story in India. Right. Relatively somewhere down the line, we will start seeing some bit of pain off, as you rightly pointed out, of high interest rate cycle, Costs have still remained elevated. The demand has to fall a bit. So it will not be a recession, but we'll see some slowdown. All this augurs well for fixed income products. And as I told you, the thumb rule if at seven and a half, the, the downside for investors on fixed income products is very, very limited. So yes, an investor has to be invested at this point of time. Just keep in mind his investment horizon, guide him the right product, 
and that makes a lot of sense for investors and definitely you'll have a very very good experience right right so uh, you know i'll i'll pick your brains a little bit on uh, the rate that you mentioned that one year one year yields are at around 7 and 1/2% uh and we'll go back a little bit to the basics because uh, you know this sometimes can become complex for a investor to understand uh when you compare uh you know when you say looking at a, a you know particular time period um there is also a, you know the investor also has the option to invest in a fixed deposit an investor would also have an option to invest in a let's say a you know bond of a nbfc of some kind right um versus the investor would have the option of investing in a mutual fund right in the case of a mutual fund uh one you know of course is that you know the nav will keep changing on a daily basis uh while your your requirement is uh, uh you know your investment horizon is fixed um so you have a one year uh you know investment horizon for let's say you know an x amount for a y amount you have a five year investment horizon uh you would find an option for doing the same amount of investment in an fd or a you know bond product uh directly the uh, you know security it's at a security level versus investing in a mutual fund right uh so could you explain how these two work differently and where uh, you know uh, why do you think you know uh, why do you think um what are some of the complexities basically that's a, uh, you know that's the uh it, it's that's always the question that uh, you know if we can answer for investors that makes making that decision a lot more easier in terms of flexibility liquidity etc uh so uh, nilam rightly pointed out i think uh, investor needs to understand that uh, uh, as you said that an fx deposit is available for all the tenors and probably how does a fixed income product help him to not only achieve the same similar kind of goals and returns but also somewhere down the line is more flexible so i think the most important element what we need to uh, first point out is that when you're investing in a fixed deposit what you're doing is you're investing in one particular bank when you're investing in a mutual fund fixed income product or a scheme i think what you also need to understand the underlying assets are significantly diversified sebi has again put us across restrictions to the tune of 10 8 and 5% depending on somewhere down the line the rating So if the rating is triple A, you need to have a single issuer of ten percent. If it is double A, you need to have eight percent. If it is single A, you need to have six percent. So what what also comes across is the portfolio is significantly diversified. You're not investing in a particular bank or a particular NBFC or a corporate, where you're taking a hundred percent credit risk on a specific issuer. Secondly, the most important element is FDs have lot of lock-ins and they have a slab rate. okay so xyz slab rate okay and the rate significantly if probably want a liquidity for some emergency for some kind of uh, meeting expenses you want to plan a travel i think what happens is you will get the relevant slab rate and a penalty to premature nft when it comes to mutual funds it works on a different format you don't you have an easy entry exit you just put redemption most of the schemes which we are uh, triple a oriented schemes have zero exit load secondly uh, they the payout of that happens on t plus 1 so when, and there is no kind of penalty so exit load is equivalent to a penalty in a kind of an fd format so i think liquidity the ease of flexibility at all point of times and somewhere down the line this entire concept of diversifications makes a, a fixed income product of a, a better choice as compared to an fd the another point which we also need to put across is that a taxation uh, part i think it's a very very tax efficient solution i i'm sure every every investor understands when it comes to fd you are subject to the marginal tax rate when it comes to mutual funds you also get the benefit of indexation so the tax efficiency plus the flexibility of liquidity at all point of times and the entire concept of diversification and on the return perspective ballpark you are probably getting exactly similar kind of returns right. uh, today if i look across at as i told you most of the retail fds if you look across any psu or private sector banks they are around 7% the two year uh, fds if you look across that's the general investment horizon for retail investor right. a two year triple a product a corporate bond is available at 7.5 so somewhere down the line the returns are quite similar in fact probably a, a, a tad better 
if you look at nbfcs also i think large nbfcs they are offering fds closer to seven quarter seven half levels right. so when it comes across the mutual fund the returns are broadly similar with the ease of flexibility with the ease of liquidity and a lot of importance needs to be given to diversification and the tax efficiency so that is how probably i'll put across for a common man the differentiation between fd and fd uh, fixed income products no very well put i just want to add a little bit more color on the tax uh, aspect of it so if there is a like to like option suppose you invest in an fd and a mutual fund uh, and you get the same return effectively uh, landed return hold to maturity return of 7.5% in both uh, the investments in the case of a mutual fund uh, you would pay tax on the uh you know you would pay long term capital gains tax and therefore the maximum rate at which you will be taxed is 20% maximum rate but indexation uh, uh actually it's less than 20% because you will get the benefit of indexation in that case and uh, you always has the option to choose the rate that is more beneficial to you so technically 10% or uh, with indexation 20% whereas in the case of uh, uh, fds you would have to deposit interest on accrued uh, you know you would have to deposit tax on accrued interest and the income you, uh, you know you it will be not taxed as capital gains but it will be taxed as at the marginal tax rate or you know it, it will be taxed as your income um, which would mean depending on which tax bracket you are you could end up paying 30% tax uh, 33% tax uh, on on your investment in it so on a like to like basis uh, taxation you know it's a very there's a very clear delta uh, between which product is more tax efficient um, also the other point that you made in terms of being able to withdraw without uh, you know having a significant penalty of course depending on how the rate cycle is moving you know uh, that uh, you know the nav may move against or in your favor but uh, aside from that there is no penalty uh, for a, from a, a, a once you are outside the exit load window uh there's another nuance to it though isn't there uh now let's say you know i had invested in a fixed income uh, product with a two year or let's say a three year horizon in mind right six months ago uh and at an nav of 100 rupees what you know if if, if i stick to my three year horizon um and i don't look at the nav then uh you know i'll probably achieve a similar return or a slightly better return than an fd product uh, that i would have started around the same time probably right uh, but what happens you know how does the nav move in such scenarios when rates are rising what happens to the nav of mutual funds fixed income uh, mutual fund products uh, when what and what happens when uh, rates are uh, you know sort of moving down and you can just probably shed some light on it in terms in the context of different periods different maturities so that Uh, you know, it's easier to understand. So, Nilavir you know, rightly pointed out. I think uh, it is important concept which people need to understand is that in in FD you need you get the interest income, and it is it is on the quarterly basis or half yearly and annual. There are too many options at maturity, cumulative at maturity. When it comes to fixed income products, what happens is your your entire uh, thing is more through a uh, appreciation through net asset value. It is. an appreciation or a depreciation in the value of the uh, investments which you make a large part you need to focus across on is that as i pointed out if you are matching the investment horizon i think significantly if your entry the example uh, there are so many products like short term fund or target maturity funds banking uh, roll down strategies okay where i at broadly a short term fund is a, you cannot go beyond 3 year duration okay. example if you see actually an investor is coming in 2000 just like we have had like now almost 200 300 basis of rate increases at the beginning of the year short term funds would be having a ytm of closer to i think probably six quarter six half levels today they are all at around seven half uh, a year back probably they would be close to six odd percent though they have seen a 200 basis of rate increase okay or repo rate increase moving from 4% to six quarter i think what we need to understand if the investor has come with a 3 year on my horizon at the beginning of the year at probably at the end of 3 years yes the first year might see some bit of depreciation in value because 
not exactly below 100, but somewhere down the line, you will see some hit to the NAV. But over a period of three years, because the next two years, we are actually not going to get any interest rate hikes. You will get a 7-7% kind of accrual. For the first year, the probably the return can be 4%. For the next two years, if it is 7-7, the addition of the three, 4 plus 7 plus 7, probably will give you 18 rupees over a period of three years on a 100 rupee of investment, which is exactly equivalent to somewhat a 6% interest which you will earn on an FD if you would have invested a year back. A year back, a two-year FD would be 5.5 to 6%. Even though we see some bit of volatility in the interim period on a fixed income product, if you are matching the duration of the fund and your investment horizon, at the exit, interim volatility is keeping aside, at the exit of your investment, you would not see any kind of significant impact to your returns. So it is very, very important one. I will, I will re-emphasize re on the fact that investors need to match their investment horizon and probably find the similar kind of product. The experience for the investor will always remain quite positive and good. And the return, which probably they will also get from the product, will be very much similar and competitive at all point of times to other products available like FD or other tax substitutes in the market. Yeah. That's a very uh, valid point. And, uh, you know, I think we've uh, we've sort of have uh, you know uh, written about this also to, to build a laddering kind of an approach uh, and where you identify that uh, you know this is my emergency pool of money so this will keep lying in let's say liquid funds or short term uh, you know very short term uh, funds with maturity less than one year and uh, uh, you know and appropriately give returns with less uh, you know the least risk from right. a, uh, you know, impact of rate volatility. Right. But as we go towards longer maturity, so you build a basket of, you know, let's say, you know, you have, again, you have 100 rupee requirement after uh, one year, uh, you want to keep 50 rupees in your, uh, uh, you know, as an emergency pool of money, you have 100 rupees requirement after three years. So for the product that you've selected with a three year maturity, where you match the product, there you shouldn't be bothered about market volatility in the interim okay. because while the NAV is, you know, because you're matching the maturity markets will likely, you know, uh, um, if you hold it to maturity, the rate changes do not impact, uh, uh, you know, the NAV at the end of the period yes. Um, yes. or is likely to, you know, sort of reflect in the return that is uh, coming in the subsequent years. Um, the other aspect is obviously the indexation will be in your favor uh, when you know when the rate cycle is moving against you. Uh, indexation will uh, move in your favor. So, uh, but just trying to simplify this kind of a you know uh, invest according to your investment horizon, keep a basket and you know allocate accordingly one year, two year, three year uh, products, and don't worry about interim uh, right. rate movements uh, because that is something that seems scary yeah. but it is uh, act, uh, you know if you take an action uh, then you've booked that loss but if you sit tight and if you just hold on till maturity then that uh, you know or for that horizon then that issue then uh, you know that loss will automatically uh, go away and it will translate into and you will get the target returns that you were expecting uh, so, just to add to your point whatever interest and volatility you get Okay, if there was, as I explained to you, if you get a 100 basis of or 150 basis of rate increase in a year, you're probably lost for a two year duration product, three rupees of carry for the year. But what also happens, which you need to keep in mind that the carry of the product which you had invested was six. Now it is more to seven and a half. So even though the 150 basis of increase is happening, it will lead to increase carry from next year and an increase YTM for the product, which will give you interest at the rate of seven and a half. So the next two years, what you have lost three rupees for the first year will be made up in the next two years and the cumulative return, if you stay for the investment horizon, what you have decided will be very much similar to what you had invested at the beginning. So it is very, very important to stay into the product and you have made a very, very good point to stay invested in the product, not take your loss and remove uh, redeem from the portfolio. Uh, so great. So let's move on to, uh, you know, so this has been a very interesting uh, discussion right from uh, trying to 
get what your view on the markets uh, on the fixed income side uh, and also in terms of you know understanding the nuance between a fixed income direct investment versus a, a fixed income mutual fund investment mutual fund investments are subject to market risk read all scheme related documents carefully